Hello, good morning, good evening. Thank you for being here and welcome to our new members. We're growing and it's so lovely. I'm glad that you all are taking advantage of this information. This is my passion. I am sharing today about alignment and I've been very enlivened by a yoga summit that I am attending. And there are speakers who are teachers that are over 50, over 60, who are very inspiring. There are inspiring young teachers from diverse backgrounds. And the trend with yoga right now is really to embrace our body shapes, embrace who we are, embrace our life to where we are, and really do a lot of self-study. In Sanskrit, it's known as Svadhyaya, to enable us to understand this map in our body, this alignment that we hold. And today I want to share some tips on how to release tension in the body. When we hold tension in our body and the tension can become a habit that we are even unconscious of, once we begin holding tension in certain areas and experience tightness, there will come a day where there's something related to that tension that will manifest as some sort of a problem. So when we have, oh, I've got back problems. I have my lower back hurts. My knee hurts. My hip hurts. I have neck pain. All of that is related to held tension. So it's, to me, it's critical to share this with you at this time of our lives, we can release the tension and stave off any medical conditions that would be related to it. If you're aware of this, you can do this for yourself every day, which is so amazing, right? And today I'm gonna to show you um, a restorative practice that will help you release your root chakra and your sacral chakra. And these are the first chakras that we always work on in yoga and Ayurveda. The root chakra is connected to our, um, to our feelings of security, feelings of safety. So those primal feelings that we all need to have to be able to feel sexy and passionate which is the next chakra in the sacral chakra, creative. Our creative energy is housed in our reproductive organs. Today we're going to release those. And it's just absolutely fundamental that we get to this point because at the base of the spine, so this is, the, this is a little front view. And if you can imagine this is a back view, this whole connection is really up the spine. As we release this area of the spine, we can release the kundalini energy that resides at the base of the spine. And I just want to read to you from my favorite book. This is the book that got it all started for me, Light on Yoga by BKS Iyengar. He's one of the best teacher, or was one of the best teachers. He shared the um, philosophy of yoga, which was, you know, it began in South Asia and then shared it with the rest of the world and we did it in such a loving way, which I just, I think is amazing. This book is fantastic and a really great primer for anyone interested in going deep with yoga. And I just want to read this to you. I think the way he has written it is, is just perfect. Kundalini is the divine cosmic energy in bodies. It is symbolized by a coiled and sleeping serpent in the lowest bodily center at the base of the spinal column. This latent energy has to be awakened and made to go up the spine to the brain through Susuna Nadi, a channel through which nervous energies pass and through the six, the six chakras, the subtle centers of the body, the flywheels of the nervous system of the human machine. So in this respect, the flywheels that he's talking about 
I love this, are the intersectionalities of the energy that runs in a circle to the sagittal part of our bodies, to the side parts. So the energy not only flows in this direction, but through the body in this direction. And this encompasses energy in our organs, in our muscle tissues, in our vascular system. So this idea of chakras is not woo-woo. This idea of chakras is another philosophy's way of describing the nervous system. So that's brilliant. I just want to give a shout out to Iyengar Yoga because his style of yoga that is still very relevant and amazing in our culture has been able to teach people through the lens of logic and with alignment being the complete um, the completeness of this philosophy. So borrowing from Iyengar Yoga, I want to share a restorative practice with you that you can do in the morning to really ground your day, open up the root chakra, sacral chakra. This can be a healing point, of a self-healing point and self-study for you if you have ever had any, so for the sacral part, any kind of injury to your um, your lower part of your body, any kind of constipation, digestive issues, anyone with Crohn's disease or any kind of inflammation of the bowel, IBS, any kind of problems like this, this is an incredibly restorative practice. And then for the sexual energy that's housed in our second chakra and the sacral chakra, Anyone who has had a pregnancy, a cesarean, anyone who may have had an abortion or a miscarriage or any kind of other trauma to this area that you would know about, this is an amazing time to restore these two chakras of safety, security, passion, and creation at the middle point of our life as we attune the body we find that this is where we may encounter some kind of medical issue. If you have medical issues in your 40s, it's very common. Things come up in the 50s too. And to restore these two areas can really benefit your overall health, especially to stave off any autoimmune disorders, which are directly related to the nervous system. So. This is why I want to connect with you on this. And then we'll go through how, and next week we'll go through how the Kundalini energy is enlivened in the rest of the chakras. So, let's see here. Next week is November, right? Okay, so we'll work it out. But I might do that in the Ayurveda section because I want to talk about the Yamas for sure. So let's get started. What I want to do is invite you to either watch, take note, or to participate by grabbing a mat or a special place. Doesn't have to have a yoga mat, you can lay a blanket down. And I just want to invite you to sit. We're gonna do about, a, I don't know, maybe an eight minute restorative practice here. Just want to invite you to work this into your day in the evening. So we're going to close our eyes for a moment just to sit Connect with the breath. I've shared a lot of information with you. And it's been a lot. There just isn't enough time in the day. <laughs> Connecting, holding the hands at the heart, feeling the breath. Does the breath rise and fall? Breathing in and out through the nose. Take a deep cleansing breath in through the nose and then we're gonna exhale through the mouth. <sighs> Eyes closed if that feels good to you or just open the gaze up just to a place in front of you. Breathing in and then let's connect with the belly breath. 
holding the hands here at the, at the belly, allowing the belly to be soft. Accepting the softness in our bodies. Mm. Embracing the softness in who we are. Sometimes we have to hold and carry tension to be strong in this world. Allowing a sacred space in your day to be able to unburden the body and unburden the muscles, the fascia, the tendons of held tension. Restoring the body becomes more important as we age. Connecting to the nervous system, the chakras, becomes more important as we age. And when you are ready to return to this lesson, Begin to open the eyes, open the eyes, and you can bring your hands to your knees as we give a gentle circular motion from the base of our spine, really enlivening this area, bringing some intention to the release that we're about to do, noticing, observing if there are any weak spots in your lower back. Here we go, and then let's reverse the motion, bringing the circular motion to the other side, whichever way you started. And this practice is so lovely and restorative, not only for you, but for everyone around you. We're all one, and we all impact one another. Bringing a sense of, now we're going to roll the, we're going to do a little cat-cow here. So rolling the tummy back, folding the tummy backward. Just hang out here for a minute. It's like a little seated cow pose. And then pressing through. You can bring your tongue out. So we're going to breathe in. As we pull the belly back, pressing the, side, the spine back, and then pressing forward. <sighs> One more time, make it count. Be as graceful as you can, feeling every vertebrae move. Moving the spine in this way, moving the joints in this way, helps to enliven the plasticity of the joints and what's going on with the spine. Reminding the body that we are flexible, releasing synovial fluid regularly helps to keep your joints and vertebrae lubricated. So try doing this every day and you will notice a, a higher level of function in the joints, even if you have arthritis. Perfect. And then let's just, let's just do a little stretch over to the, to one side. I'm moving to my right. Looking toward the right. Bringing the arm to the other side bolster here and then really looking up or over where are we going here and let's do that one more time fantastic warming up the body is so important even in a restorative pose helping the body remember that everything is all connected <laughs> So here's what we're going to do. The sun is coming in, so I'm going to face the sun in my, in my restoration and just really enjoy that pleasurable feeling of having the sun on my body. 
And I'm going to, I have a bolster. This is a yoga bolster, but you can get a big pillow. You can run and get a big pillow to use. You could really um, do just about anything. So we're gonna do this in two different ways. The first way we're gonna do it is to line it up um, with our spine. And you may be taller than me. I'm petite. My body's different and I love it. But if you are taller than me, you have a longer torso, you may need to have a little extra padding. My head comes all the way at the end here. And then I also have a strap, but this isn't required. You could use a towel, you could use a belt, or some kind of something that would match what the action is that I'm about to do. Or you don't have to have anything, actually. Now, what we're going to do is I'm going to bring my feet as close as I can to my pelvis, just right here. And I'm going to wrap the strap around the bottom of my feet, the sides of my feet, it's reaching the ground. And I'm just gonna give myself a gentle lift here. I'm just gonna pull myself forward. Notice how my back is really adjusting and feeling that beautiful motion of alignment and releasing tension from all of the areas of my vertebrae and neck by giving it proper alignment. So, so lovely. You can do this all by yourself. You don't have to go anywhere to do this. And now we're going to hold our feet in position and then lean back. So you may need to adjust it as you lean back. And I'm leaning, I'm leaning back under my plants. And I'm just kind of positioning my feet. I'm not gonna tie myself up. If I were in a yoga class, I might be encouraged to do so, but I'm at home. And I just want to restore the root chakra and the sacral chakra. This restoration, lying in this position, opening up these chakras in this way, allow us to release the tension of the root chakra opening it up, releasing any held emotions from years past, days past, and doing this action every day, every other day, whatever you can manage, is key to truly benefiting from a practice of intention to release these areas to improve your alignment. So breathing in, you can have a, a soft belly here. Mine is naturally like going backwards, but you might have a bigger belly. Just let it hang out. Breathing in and out, we're going to stay here for a little bit to really focus on opening this area up, releasing yin energy, which is inward energy, feminine energy. And we need to release more feminine energy in the world, yogini prana. So in my restorative practice, when I, when I tell the kids, kids, husband, partner, I am going downstairs, I'm going to do my restorative practice. This is the one that I do um, every night. I try to do it every night. Sometimes I don't, I, I'm not able to. But it's part of what I do after I take off my, my, my do my skincare, I take off my makeup, I wear a little um, tinted moisturizer and a little blush and take that off. I do tapping when I'm looking in the mirror and then I set myself up and I do this. And I do it for as long as I can. 
sometimes I fall asleep like this. <laughs> and sometimes I don't. Sometimes it's five minutes, sometimes it's 15 minutes. Sometimes it's part of a larger restorative practice. But this is one of the best things that you can do for yourself always. This is a go-to pose. Now while we're here, I'm going to add one face yoga. So bringing the hands together, place both hands on top of the forehead, roll the shoulders back and breathe in. Pull the forehead back toward the hairline for 10, 9, 8, Seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. And release. I love it. And then I'm also going to do acupressure points. By and we've done this one before, and we've done this several times in this group. But pressing my thumbs on the inside of my eye socket, just below the beginnings of my eyebrows. I'm going to hold this for five, four, three, two, one, and then move to the midline of the, the eyebrow for five, four, three, two, one, and then over on the edge, a little divot next to the end of my eyebrow for five, four, three, two, one, and then taking my hands, placing them just behind my ears, I'm going to press up at a 45 degree angle for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, release, open your mouth and make a big O shape. And release. Now, what we're going to do is unravel, releasing the legs, removing the strap, shaking the knees out. So, so lovely. You might want to bring your feet to the floor and give yourself a little stretch to one side, stretching that, that open side of the back. Oh, it feels so nice. And then the other side, giving ourselves a little stretch. Fantastic. Rolling over to one side and pressing up. That was so lovely. Now, I'm just going to show you what I would do after that pose. I would do a Shavasana. And I do generally do a few more poses of restorative practice, but I wanted to introduce this one to you to release those chakras. So just as a counter pose to release the hips and soften the knees, we just stretch them out so much. Placing your knees on top of a bolster or a big pillow is a real beautiful treat for yourself. So I'm going to ask you to tone your abs and really work those triceps when you're coming down, toning the abs, sculpting the belly down. And really finding your center as you burn that belly, coming down and then <sighs> I'm going to invite you to stay here as long as you want. Just let this video play out. Breathing in and out through the nose, observing the feelings of release. I release some tension here today. I'm noticing more about my sacral area. I have two cesareans. It's sometimes hard to find my abdominal muscles. But when I do that, um, that reclined pigeon pose, that's what it's called, with the legs open, I'm able to find the abdominal muscles. And that's the beginning of everything of feeling spelt, feeling connected, feeling creative and sexy. Really. And when you're ready, you can
can wiggle your fingers and toes, roll to one side, and stay here for just a few seconds, and press up. And here we are. We've explored so much together in this, is it 30 minutes, 25 minutes? And it's just a very beginning lesson. So I wanted to invite you to soften into these ideas. I don't know what your yoga background is, but this is a gift from me to you to help you release your feminine energy stored in these areas so you can realize just confidence, just intelligence, intuition, and connecting all of that beauty together, glowing into your personal community, into our universe, and really helping our, um, our communities, our planet, by releasing feminine, positive energy in the world. We need so much more of that, don't we? Thank you for being here, and I'll see you tomorrow in an Ayurveda lesson. Bye.